I'm a professor at Case Western Reserve University, and I'm the founder of NeoIndicate. We are discovering advanced tools for improved tumor detection, imaging, and treatment. Currently, clinicians are using anatomical images and biopsies to determine if you have cancer, and they cannot see tumor margins during surgery. And often they're using ineffective treatments to, to treat invasive disease. And at NeoIndicate, we guide precision surgical resection to treat invasive tumors so there is no tumor left behind. For one tumor type, a brain tumor called glioblastoma multiforme, they actually use fluorescent microscopes during surgery. And they use a fluorescent agent that's nonspecific called gliolin, and it glows during surgery. Unfortunately, that agent does not see tumor margins particularly well, and there's a greater than 90% local recurrence. And what we do know is that maximal safe resection doubles patient survival. We discovered a paradigm whereby certain cell adhesion molecules are cleaved in the tumor microenvironment and create tumor-specific biomarkers. We can then make peptides that recognize these biomarkers, link them to a fluorescent agent or fluorofluor, and create the NEO1 imaging agent. And currently, you're lucky if your surgeon can see the green main tumor mass, but they can't see any of the invasive yellow cells and NEO1 can light up those cells. We made these peptides against PTP mu, which is a, a biomarker found both on the tumor cells and in the neovascularized blood vessels. And as you can see, NEO1 does not detect anything in normal cells or normal brain, but is able to detect glioblastoma tumors. And you can take these peptides and you can link them to any fluorophore or contrast agent or even nanoparticles. And this slide shows that we are able to recognize both main tumor and distantly migrating cells in 100% of GBM patients or their tumor cells that we've tested with the NEO1 fluorescent agent, which will allow us to do fluorescence guided resection of tumors. We've also determined that NEO1 works not only on brain tumors, but ovarian, breast, prostate, lung cancer, and melanomas that we've tested. And it detects both the main tumor mass and metastatic lesions, as you can see in these nodules in ovarian cancer. And it can also detect metastases to the brain. We've developed a platform of technologies based upon these peptides that allow us to do in vitro diagnostics, MRI, PET, imaging or targeted delivery of therapeutics. And as demonstrated in this pitch today, we can do both fluorescence guided resection and something called photodynamic therapy. So PDT is something that allows you to take a low cost diagnostic and make it a therapeutic. So if you use a fluorescent agent that's also a photosensitizer, you can use that to remove the tumors during fluorescence guided resection. And then after you've debulked those tumors, at the end, you shine light in that area. And that light causes a physical killing of the tumor cells that have the agent attached to it. And it even kills stem-like tumor cells that are notoriously difficult to treat with therapeutics. Once you've treated with the PDT, that induces an immune response where the immune cells come in and clean up that PDT damage, and thus you've created an immunotherapy. And GBM has a notoriously cold tumor microenvironment, and this will make it an immunologically hot tumor microenvironment. NeoIndicate is based upon over 30 years of research that I've done on PTP mu, 16 years developing imaging agents, over 80 publications, and I have 11 issued patents and five pending applications. Nine of those issued patents or pending applications have been optioned or licensed to NeoIndicate. We've recruited a seasoned veteran chief executive officer named Ted Gastineau. He has over 50 imaging agent IND submissions, five imaging company exits. There's myself as founder and chief scientific officer and Samantha Oblander who did her PhD in my laboratory 
went out and worked in startup and business development for 10 years, and we recruited her back to become chief operating officer. We have key partnerships with Andy Sloan, who's a neurosurgeon at University Hospitals in Cleveland. He was the first person to test gliolin in clinical trials in the United States, and he will perform the NEO-1 clinical trial. We have Nancy Olenek, who's a developer of PDT agents and an expert in clinical PDT. James Basilian, who's a molecular imaging and PDT expert. Steve Fenning, who's a translational research expert and the director of the Case Coulter Translational Research Partnership. Mark Lowe, who's a commercialization expert. He headed one of the three NCAI centers in the US to develop and commercialize technologies. Here's our NEO-1 development timeline for glioblastoma. We've performed a series of discovery and preclinical imaging studies. We are now in a manufacturing partnership, uh, generating engineering batches that are in CGMP uh, grade fashion. We're doing toxicology studies. We have a pre-reviewed IRB and investigators brochure and a clinical protocol. And we are poised to begin our clinical trial with neurosurgeon Andy Sloan. And we expect NDA approval by 2025. We've had a pre-IND meeting with the FDA and they recommended single dose studies in one rodent and one non-rodent species. And they furthermore indicated that for any agent in our platform that we use at similar concentrations or lower, we would not have to perform additional toxicology. And one of the reasons we chose GBM is there are many opportunities there. It's an orphan disease. We're eligible for fast track and breakthrough designation. Our overall pipeline for NEOINDICATE is to begin with our fluorescence guided resection phase zero slash one clinical trial in GBM, and then expand that to other types of brain tumors, including metastatic tumors to the brain. Investigate the other cancer types that we've shown preliminary data for, and test the concept of PDT to de-risk this as a novel therapeutic. Our initial market is GBM, and we plan to expand to both primary and metastatic tumors to the brain, and then follow with most solid tumors where we've shown changes in ovarian, breast, prostate, lung, and melanoma, which would be a $3 billion market. And those numbers are for a single administration of the diagnostic agent, and the therapeutic potential is much higher. NeoIndicate is a NEO-1 is a specific molecular imaging agent that visualizes brain tumors, their margins, it has a great depth of penetration of light, and it's easily modified for many different applications. And we have extensive patent protection. And this, these are significant improvements over the currently FDA-approved drug gliolin. There are other agents in development that have some limitations in each of these categories. We're leveraging over $10 million of funding on these PTP mu imaging agents from the NIH in a series of translational programs at Case Western Reserve University, the Case Coulter Translational Research Partnership, the Technology Transfer Office, the School of Medicine, and the Case Comprehensive Cancer Center. And NEO Indicate has already raised 250,000, and we were recently awarded a prestigious state of Ohio TVSF phase two award directly to the company for technology validation and startup. And we're seeking 900,000 to complete our phase one slash zero trial in GBM. Here's my contact information at the university and at NEO Indicate. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brady Kalme. We're gonna move into the Q and A. Do any of the judges wanna start off with the first question? Um, this is Gladys. I, I have a question. Uh, first of all, uh, good presentation, um, Dr. Brady Kalney. So thank you very much for that. I definitely agree. It's GBM is such a um, you know a key indication that has a very limited treatment. Can you talk a little bit about the the PK studies? Um, to how long? Um, it seems pretty stable just from your description of being able to to stay uh, close to the tumor. And, and lighting up, but how long are you planning on doing any studies as you get into the mouse models and other models just to better understand the pharmacokinetic properties that it's staying localized? Yeah, so we've, we've done a series of studies already that show that 
the um, agent is within two cell distances from a tumor at, at a microscopic level, it doesn't seem to uh, diffuse very far away. It's stable for um, many uh, days as the agent itself, you can always detect it in tumors as the imaging agent it depends upon the fluorophore that you use. And so it, it binds within minutes and it's stable for hours to 24 hours, depending upon what fluorophore is on the, the peptide itself. So um, we have a long a window for surgical use, which we've engineered into the process because neurosurgeries can be quite long. Um, so that has um, been part of our planning process. For um, treatment-based things, we've done uh, nanoparticle-based experiments where it, you can have it there for days and weeks. And um, so that, again, is dependent upon the cargo that you're delivering. So the peptides are your recognition component, and then the cargo can determine um, what your PK is, what your biodistribution is, all that sort of thing. And so we've, we've done um, a series of nanoparticles, a series of fluorophores, and you get uh, different answers depending upon what what's attached to it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And especially the 24 hour window on the imaging component. So thank you. Uh, Jeff, I see your hands raised. Would you like to ask the next question? Yeah, so um, uh, two questions. By the way, you answered a couple of questions. I was gonna probe you a little bit on the nanoparticle. So thank you for already answering that. Um, have you also considered tagging the stuff you don't want to resect? So for example, nerves during uh, prostate cancer removal. Mm -hmm. So it's great that you want to take out the stuff you want to take out, but you could also use exactly your technology, I think, to decide what you don't want to touch. So that one question. And then the second question, are you familiar with PCORI, the Patient-Centered Outcome Research Institute? Um, I'm wondering if your uh, invention here might actually also align. I used to, um, I was appointed by Congress and sat on the um, the advisory board for PCORI and, um, you know, your invention here seems like something that could mesh with PCORI's mission. So I didn't know if you were aware of that. Yeah, I, I haven't um, learned too much about that institute, but I will say that in one of the reasons this is so important in glioblastoma, as you are alluding to, is that it's more important what you don't cut out than what you do. So oftentimes people are taking margins in tumors just to be safe. And it's very difficult to do that in the brain without functional deficit. So it's really important to know what not to cut and not to take too much when there's no tumor there. And then to take more tissue where there is tumor. And so it, you're right, it's very important to use this as a way to delineate what not to cut and what to cut. And that's our goal. Thank you. Nancy, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's very compelling. Um, this may seem very early, but obviously this is very promising technology and you've been at this for a while. Have you had an opportunity to think about what your exit strategy might be and who your strategics might be in, in terms of partnering? Yeah, so I, I think there's many different strategies that one can take. We, there's certainly interest from the device companies that need good fluorophores to use their device. So for example, intuitive surgical, those types of companies need good fluorescent agents so that the robotics know how to cut. That's not the case in GBM, but for example, GBM surgery is so expensive that if you could convert it from open cradionomy to minimally invasive, you've opened a new market there. So there's certainly the device aspect. And then there's the therapeutic aspect. So it's really the recognition event that's key here, right? And that's what we have in these peptides. And you could put whatever you want onto it. So it could be various drug conjugates, um, nanobubbles, microbubbles, uh, nanoparticles. So there's a lot of partnership opportunities because what they're missing is the recognition component, not the, the cargo delivery system. So, you know, we've looked into strategic partnerships there. And then there are a series of opportunities based upon the cancer type because they're each um, treated in very different fashions in, um, in long, longitudinal ways. So for example, these peptides work on a lot of metastatic tumors to the brain that are currently untreatable. And as you are, I'm sure well aware, there's a lot of immunologically cold tumors that need to be 
um, treated in a different fashion to make any immunotherapies work. So, so we're looking at a lot of the physical killing strategies as a way to, to amp up the immune response in tumors that are currently unresponsive to those novel therapies. So we'd like to get into a series of combination trials down the road where we can combine it with other things and hopefully get a better outcome for cancer patients because invasive tumors are what kill people and there aren't good treatments right now. Thank you so much, Dr. Brady-Kelmay, great job. Thank you.